Hello everybody, I'm Nick. In a previous video, I mentioned how Identity Server 4 was just wiped out of existence from that public repo that was archived for a few years now because Identity Server 4 isn't really updated. However, it is now back in a different repository. When they listen to the feedback we gave, and there's value on actually having the repo. So as you can see, they just posted today that the team is committed to delivering the most secure, standard compliant, trusted identity solutions. And while Identity Server is fully supported for secure uh, OpenID Connect and so on, the older Identity Server 4 contains multiple known security vulnerabilities, bugs, and outdated documentation. However, there's still companies depending on that product and that documentation, as well as issues and pull requests and just the history of how the software was made. And it was a shame that we would lose all that by them just removing the repository. So on the 17th of March, they just sent their repository private, just resulting in all the forks being sort of restructured. And with over 2000 forks on GitHub, anyone who wanted to continue working for it, they couldn't do it from the original location, but uh, they could do it from everyone else who had forked it. However, due to community feedback, which we talked about, this is on the GitHub repo, so people explained why there should be an identity server for public repository, even though it is outdated and it has security issues, because seeing all that history is very, very valuable to see how people solved problems, to see documentation, to see pull requests, all that had value. And even if you just archive the code, you would lose all that. However, Duende created a public identity server for archive. Now, this is a bit tricky because even though you can now find Identity Server 4, the official archive under Duende Archive, which is a separate sort of organization they have, if you just look at this, you will find nothing. There is literally no code. However, if you read here, it says that we did this intentionally to not confuse people, which is a bit more confusing, but they want to show that you are eager to use something that is archived. So the main branch has nothing. However, if you click here and you select archive, you will see that code as it was when it was turned private. So the archive branch is all you need. You can still get access to all of the issues that were ever created. So nothing is removed. All 4,538 issues are here for you to view as well as the pull requests. So all the closed PRs, everything, documentation, all that is still here. The problem is you have to eagerly switch to the archive branch. But for us to have all the docs and everything, I think this is a massive win. And I'm very happy we actually talked about this because when we talk about it and we give more perspective, companies, hopefully good companies like Duende, listen. So for multiple important reasons, they made the repositories private. However, Identity Server 4 is out of support because it was done in Core 3. It reached end of life in 2022. And for many years, the repositories played warning issues to the NuGet packages. However, they saw that the source code was still being cloned and the packages will still be used. Yeah, the NuGet package is still actively used a lot, even though it is private. So you can't really search for it and find it. If you have the name and the version, you can still pull it. That hasn't been removed. It has thousands of downloads. So the steps they made is it's archived, it's read-only. They moved it into a separate organization. It's on a separate branch, so you can show intentionality. And then this means that the repo is also still searchable and available on GitHub, which was the biggest issue. We're trying to find ways to just export all the issues and all the pull requests just to save them in some capacity. But even though I ask you, what solutions do we have for that? There isn't really a solution that clones GitHub including issues and pull requests. So we don't have to worry about that anymore. And only the readme and the license remains on the main branch with instructions on how to switch to the archive. Now, of course, Duende wants you to remember that they also have a community edition on top of the quite pricey, but you know, it is what it is. It's an authentication library and authentication system. They have a community edition that is available to many developers. It can be used by individuals, for-profit companies with less than 1 million projected annual gross revenue and on profits with less than 1 million USD in budget. However, that doesn't mention the entire story because if we go here and if I remember correctly, where is it? You also need to have less than $3 million in capital facilities. So, so if the company has more than 3 million, I guess in some capacity, I don't know what capital capital facilities exactly refers. I'm sure they have like a very technical term about that. But I would guess that if you had, like, for example, 3 million in funding or 3 million in the bank, even though you didn't make 1 million in a year, but you accrued it over a few years, 
you'd still have to buy a license for this. Now, that was still there. Nothing really changed on that front. However, we got the repo back. So I'm glad that everyone went here. I think it's really worth reading this post to see how the company was talked effectively into bringing it back. I will put a link in the description, why not, in case you want this just for historic purposes. But the point that you shouldn't be using Identity Server for is still true. They're not just saying it because they want to sell you the premium product. It is outdated. It is not secure. You should move away. You are effectively in danger. There's other alternatives. Keycloak, OpenID. Idict. I've never actually pronounced this product's name, but I'm assuming it's open Idict. So if you are on that outdated version, please, please, please move away. Yes, the product has gotten more expensive over here over the years. This was not when it started $20,000 per year. I think it was 12 and then 16. It was definitely 16 at some point, I can tell you that. However, for authentication purposes, it's expensive, there's cheaper alternatives, but if you see value in this, or if you just want to migrate from the old system into the new one, this will be fairly painless. But I'm going to leave that with you. So what do you think about all this? Leave a comment down below, let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. As always, keep coding.